Happy uh, Holy Trinity Sunday and Memorial Day weekend. And we are so happy to have all of you here with us on this beautiful sunny day. A um, couple things. Last weekend I was at our Mother of Sorrows making the same announcement to everybody that Father Joseph made here to everybody about the social distancing and not social distancing and the mask issue. So just to reiterate, the church proper is no longer social distancing for those who are fully vaccinated and masks are optional in this area. Um, if you are comfortable to keep your mask on or off, that's up to you, but that is what is happening in the church proper. Our social distancing area is the side room and the parish center for the 5 and the 10 o'clock masses as they are continuing to be live streamed. Masks are required in the social distancing area for those who are not vaccinated. So, uh, so just that you are aware of the, that, um, just to remind you. Also, beginning next weekend, which is the Solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ Sunday, we will be going back to doing communion the way we were doing it pre-pandemic. Both sides at one time in the center and around the side aisles. Ushers will be you know, coming back up the aisle to uh, send you on your way. We will have four communion ministers back up front again next, some, beginning next week. We will have a communion minister for the side room in the parish center. That's all beginning again next week. And then last but not least, certainly, um, we received a directive from the bishop. So as we continue to get messages from the bishop based on CDC and New York State guidelines, we share them with all of you. So I'm going to read to you what our directive was that came from the bishop this week. Today, with vaccination rates rising, infection numbers across the state are falling, and we are seeing the reopening of every sector of society, including businesses, restaurants, and sporting events. Now it is time to return to Sunday Mass. The obligation to attend Holy Mass on the Lord's Day is a sacred one. Anyone who is frail or at risk due to advanced age or medical conditions is always excused from this obligation. And we, are encouraged, we encourage you to use your prudential judgment throughout this pandemic and to determine if it was safe for you to attend Mass. This remains true. However, for those who are healthy and not at great risk, the presumption of the faithful should be that unless they are at an enhanced risk, sick, or caring for others who are at risk or sick, the obligation to attend Sunday Mass now resumes, effective the weekend of June 5th and 6th, 2021, the Solemnity of Corpus Christi, the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ. So what the bishop is saying is that if you can't come to church for health reasons, we will continue to stream our masses at 5 and 10 and daily masses. However, the Sunday obligation is required again or coming back again. So we ask that you all join us. Our church is safe. We continue to sanitize after every mass. There, we really, our top priority is to keep everybody safe and healthy. So. Please, welcome back. We are thrilled to have you join us. God bless. Good morning. And welcome to all who are here and all who are watching. We are pleased to have you join in our Eucharistic celebration. There is one envelope this week, our regular collection. Please place your envelope in one of the three baskets around church. As always, thank you for your continued support. From 12 p.m. until 3 p.m., we will have First Friday Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament on Friday, June 4th, at our Mother of Sorrows Church. The great, gigantic, glorious garage sale is back. Fred is back and will be helping to run it with Tom from the Knights of Columbus. It's coming in August, so as, you, as your spring cleaning, save your gently used to new looking items to donate. More information will be coming next week. 
Our church continues to be open every Wednesday from 1 p.m. until 5 p.m. for Eucharistic adoration and benediction. Our Mother of Sorrows Church is open every day from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. for private prayer. All are welcome to stop by and sit with our Lord during any of these times. As a reminder, the side room for every Mass and the parish center for 5, PM, for, for 5 and 10 a.m. Mass are for social distancing, and masks are required in these two areas. If you choose to sit in the main body of the church, there is no social distancing, and masks are not required for those who are fully vaccinated. As we prepare ourselves, let us turn our attention to the altar, where the holy sacrifice of the Mass will be celebrated by Father Marticello for this Most Holy Trinity Sunday. And so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. 
Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing true faith we may acknowledge the Trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth. Ask from one end of the sky to the other, did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any god venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation? By testings, by signs and wonders, by war, with strong hand and outstretched arm and by great terrors, all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. This is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below, and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoy on you today, that, your that you and your children after you may prosper, and that you may have long life on the land which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 
Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, by the breath of his mouth all their host. For he spoke and it was made, he commanded and it stood forth. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe 
all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is Trinity Sunday. Today we celebrate our one Trinitarian God, the Most Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who we worship and adore. It has been revealed to us in ancient biblical history that there is only one God. There is no other God but the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And in the Gospel, it has been revealed to us through divine revelation that God is also a trinity of divine persons, three distinct divine persons, yet one in essence, one in unity, one in love. And throughout the history of the Church, there have been a countless number of books written on the Trinity attempts to give us a deeper theological understanding of what has already been revealed in sacred scripture about the Trinity. But my friends, even with all of that, we have only seen the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more to God that we don't know, so much more that exceeds our understanding, so much that we can't even comprehend. So, I will try to do my best today. But before I begin, I want to share with you a story about St. Augustine, great doctor of the Church. While Augustine was working on his book on the Trinity, he was walking by the seaside one day meditating on the difficult problem of how God could be one in three. He came upon a child. The child had dug a little hole in the sand and with a seashell was scooping water from the sea into the small hole. Augustine watched him for a while and finally asked the child what he was doing. The child answered that he would scoop all the water from the sea and pour it into the little hole in the sand. What, Augustine said, that is impossible. Obviously the sea is too large and the hole too small. Indeed, said the child, but I will sooner draw all the water from the sea and empty it into this hole then you will succeed in penetrating the mystery of the Holy Trinity with your limited understanding. Augustine turned away in amazement, and when he looked back, the child had disappeared. And so with our limited understanding, we like to create these inaccurate portrayals of the Trinity. We often see God the Father as an old man in the sky with Jesus beside him and with the Holy Spirit depicted as a dove descending between them, right? But my friends, just for the record, I want to say that God the Father is not a man in the sky, nor is God the Holy Spirit a dove. They are rather spirit, so they don't have a material form. But because the Son of God became incarnate and became man, God is forever united to human nature through the humanity of Jesus Christ. That's why the incarnation of Christ is so awesome, because God will forever have a human nature in Jesus Christ. So the portrayal of the Son of God as the man Jesus Christ is correct, since the Son of God took on a bodily form. 
But to be clear, all three are distinct divine persons in relationship with each other, in intimate union with each other, and bound in perfect harmony by each other's love. One in essence, one in love. Another common theological error is the belief that God is one, but has three different hats and masks that he wears, three different modes of being and acting and revealing himself. This is a wrong understanding, for the three divine persons of the Trinity are real persons and really distinct from one another, yet all are one God. This is a great mystery that we will never wrap our minds around. And if someone claims to have the answer, don't believe him, for they are most likely in error and probably spreading heresy. And even good old St. Patrick with the three-leaf clover that we're all familiar with. I hope there's no Irish here today. (laughs) But even that is an inaccurate understanding and a poor analogy of the Most Holy Trinity. It doesn't quite hit the mark. So we have to be careful with analogies for the Trinity because there really is no good analogy for the Most Holy Trinity. For God is too great beyond our understanding. But what we do know is that God is a trinity of love. And my friends, other religions can only attribute love as a characteristic of God. They can only say that God is loving. But because we believe that God is a trinity of divine persons, we can say that God is love. Because love requires another, a relationship, a family, a trinity of persons, a mutual reciprocation of love. And so the most holy trinity is a trinity of love. And so have you ever wondered what God was doing before he created the world and the entire cosmos? I know, it's a deep and very interesting question, isn't it? There's one thing we can be sure of. Before creating the world, God loved because God is love. And there was so much love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that love was overflowing. This love couldn't be contained or be kept for God himself. This love was so great that he could not be egoistic or selfish. Love had to be poured out and shared with those outside himself. Therefore, God created this marvelous world from the abundance of his goodness and from his overflowing love. He creates to share the goodness of his love with all of humanity so that we might come and partake in his mighty love. So you could say that we were loved into existence. And not only that, but God created us in his own image and likeness. That is, as distinct persons in relationship to one another, with the potential to love one another. Therefore, no man is to be an island, isolated, quarantined, and cut off from others. No man is to live selfishly for himself. Genesis says that it's not good for man to be alone. And out of fear, We like to close ourselves off from others, don't we? And even from the gift of life. But love opens up to others and to the endless possibilities 
of the great and beautiful miracles of life. And so we are made for relationship, for love, by love. We are made to be like our God, the Most Holy Trinity, overflowing with love that brings forth new life into this world, to be fruitful and multiply. And so by understanding God as a Trinitarian God, we come to better understand ourselves. To be is to be with, in relationship to one another and to Almighty God. We were created as social, relational beings. And so we are called to come out of ourselves and to love and care for our brothers and sisters we live with in this world, our common home. We are to selflessly serve one another in the spirit of love. But when we selfishly live for ourselves in our own little narcissistic bubbles, where life is all about me, getting what I want, then we turn to sin and begin to create rifts and tensions and divisions among ourselves and in society. And lately we have seen a lot of that. But the whole point of everything that we profess and believe, the whole point of the moral life, the whole point of the Christian life is to love and to live like God, the Most Holy Trinity, to live the life of the Trinity. But in order to love like God, we need his love, for we can't give what we don't have. So we need God's grace. And where do we receive God's grace? In the sacraments, beginning with baptism, where we are born again into the very life of the Most Holy Trinity. And this life is preserved and fortified in prayer and in doing good works. And so let us give praise and thanks to Almighty God on this most solemn day of His. Today, gather together in communion as one family of faith, we sing with joyful hearts the resounding hymn of praise to our triune God, O Most Holy Trinity, undivided unity, Holy God, Mighty God, God immortal, be adored. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, 
who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For our holy shepherds in the Church, who continue the mission of baptizing all nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that they may know from personal experience that Jesus is always with them, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For national leaders, that in their labors for the common good, they may keep God's statutes and commandments, so that each nation may prosper in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord for graduates, for newlyweds, for all men and women marking important transitions in their lives, that they may be supported by the loving divine energy that guides them in the ways of faithfulness and truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the Holy Spirit of adoption may give us the confidence to call on God as Abba, taking hold of our inheritance as beloved children of the Most High, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those enrolled in our book of prayers, for the sick, the imprisoned, those who feel isolated from God, that we who are led by the Spirit of God may reach out to them and draw them into the divine communion of grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord for our faithfully departed ones, that they may be in the heart and love of the Blessed Trinity, especially Mary de Ponzio, and for Philip Caputo, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We unite these and all our poor prayers to those of the Immaculate Blessed Virgin Mary and speak them in the name of her Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Gave love and life 
to heal our brokenness and loss. Their equal friend, all life sustains with greening power and loving care. And calls us born again by grace in love's communing life to share. How wonderful the living God, divine. He loved empowering friend, eternal love, a three in one, our hopes beginning way and Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify by the invocation of your name. We pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son, and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. 
Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
history of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
one prayer, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we Throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and with so many throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Many the gifts, many the works, one in the Lord of all, one bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless, and we, so many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one alone. Rain for the feet. Scattered and grown, gathered to one for all. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless. And we, so many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one
act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May receiving the sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess our eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thy soul in self-control, thy living.